to my presentation today on unifying the design space and optimizing linear and nonlinear trust metamaterials by General Model Bill Long. Sorry about that. And so to give you a brief motivation, uh, metamaterials are materials with um, with properties that you won't find in nature. And by manipulating their geometries or architectures, we can achieve superior properties, such as the combination of uh, very high strength and uh, ultra lightweight, which can be very beneficial in, for example, um, aircraft vehicles. And the design of these metamaterials involves two challenges. The first one is the forward problem. Given a structure, what are the properties of those? And the second challenge is the inverse design. Uh, let's say we want, we want certain properties. How do we have to make the architecture to achieve such properties? And this can be used, for example, in like customized products. And so imagine you're building the world with Lego bricks. You know what picture you want, but you don't know how to assemble the pieces. And the problem is you can assemble them in countless ways. So we want to build a machine learning model that helps us to do this. And so the first question is, how do we describe our Lego box to the computer? Or how to parameterize the trust design space? And one of the main challenges in designing trust-based metamaterials is um, how to explore such a vast and discrete design space. And what we do here is to formulate the trust structure as a graph with nodes and connections. So we define the nodes and we connect them in all kinds of different ways. And this gives rise to a broad range of uh, trust structures with different properties. But so far, the design challenges persist. The design space is highly dimensional and discrete. And this becomes very complicated as the number of um, discrete elements and possible combinations increases. And this is where the machine learning model comes into play. So we use this um, one type of generative model, variational autoencoder. And the most remarkable aspects of these generative models is their ability to produce novel, imaginative, or realistic outputs simply by directly learning from the underlying structure of the data itself. So this is how the variation autoencoder model works. The encoder model tries to bring down this high dimensional input to a low dimensional continuous latent space. And the decoder model does exactly the opposite. It's supposed to go from the latent space to the recon reconstructed structure, ideally back to the same truss. And then we can throw in a property predictor that goes from the latent space to the property that we want to investigate. And the hope is then, of course, we want to do optimization here um, towards properties. And whichever point we pick up from the latent space, it should always or almost always um, give us a structure to come out at the end. And beyond that, we also want to give this intractable latent space some physical meaning in the sense that we disentangle the latent representations to dif different physical quantities. So for example, here we have uh, specific dimensions in the latent space that are ex exclusively connected to, uh, to the connectivity or to the node positions, and there's an overlap as well. And by manipulating different latent uh, dimensions, we can generate an array of distinct structures with uh, different properties simply by going into different directions. And this decomposition makes the latent representation a meaningful and a structural representation of the original discrete design space. And another nice thing you can do with this continuous latent representation is that you can interpolate between any two points in the, um, in the, training, in the, in the training space. Um, so, for example, here I took two structures with extreme Young's modulus, one, the one that has the lowest um, Young's modulus and the one that had the highest. And by interpolating between the two, you kind of get a smooth transition of walking around in the latent space. And the model would come up with structures all along the way that brings you from the lowest value to the highest. And a uh, final thing you can do with this framework is that you can do optimization. So we start with some initial guess, and let's say we want a structure that has a target property S, and then we can compare the predicted property S star and the target property and use the difference as the objective function for the optimization problem. So here we try out with the uh, structure with negative Poisson's ratio. So we start, uh, we start with the initial point and we run the optimization and it ends up with some structure whose Poisson's ratio is not only more than 40% lower than where we started, but it's so far outside of the training data set, which shows, that the, which shows the potential of the generative model in not just memorizing training data points, but actually generalizing from a comprehensive data set and effectively uh, capturing the underlying physical relations. 
And what is also very nice is that this framework can be well generalized to other types of properties. For example, here we look at uh, nonlinear responses, which is usually very difficult to, uh, to design with classical optimization schemes. And it can also be uh, extended to other types of materials simply by replacing the parameterization of the design space. And so this just shows the potential of the framework to optimize and analyze a broad range of metamaterials. So with that, I'd like to conclude. And if you're interested or have any questions, please feel free to reach out or check our publication. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lee.